If you're like me and you're coding on a daily basis, AI is as scary as it is impressive. OpenAI keeps throwing at us new versions of their powerful language models, and recently their new baby GPT-4 just arrived. A very expensive baby, by the way. It costs 15 times more than GPT-3.5. There is approximately a billion videos on this topic on YouTube, but I've not been using ChatGPT in my everyday life to code, and last weekend I was able to code my own version of ChatGPT using well. ChatGPT. And spoiler alert, I felt I had superpower. But ChatGPT isn't perfect. I made a lot of mistakes. I also lost a lot of time using it the wrong way. So I want to share with you some tips that I learned along the way so you can get the most of it. Okay, let's start by the first thing uh, that you've got to be aware of. I think everyone knows it by now, but it's worth explaining it again. The model isn't really up to date. We might think that it's not really an issue, but this will probably fix by the plugins. They, they will essentially give access to the internet to ChatGPT. But in the meantime, sometimes it will give you pieces of code or logic that don't work anymore. Or it will hallucinate and give you straight up wrong answers. So for instance, if I type, what's the difference between Next.js app, Oops. app folder and age folder? You see, because the app folder in Next.js is a new feature that has been released this year, uh, ChatGPT has no idea what we're talking about, and it will once again hallucinate or give you something that might be true or that seems to be true, but that actually isn't. So this is something that you've got to keep in mind and always verify what ChatGPT says. So in my opinion, the best way to approach coding with it is not to delegate too much of the logic to it. You need to stay the captain of the ship by giving clear, guided instructions. I used to be lazy. I mean, <laughs> I'm st I'm still am sometimes, but I was almost asking ChatGPT to code the whole logic of the project I'm working on by itself. Code a clone of OnlyFans, but for actual fans of celebrities. <laughs> anyway, but doing that is the best way for you to lose time and lose control of your code base. ChatGPT isn't aware of your tech stack and the whole logic of your project, so their answer will be generic. So try to minimize your request to small chunk of code. For instance, this weekend for my project, I needed a function that converts a subscriber count from a large number to a shortened version like you have on YouTube. By the way, look how this number is small. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Write a function that takes a number as input and, and returns a shortened version of the number in this format. One fourteen hundred returns one point four k and one million turns one million. Is it? Is it one two three? Whatever. Yes, it's one million. Let's go. Okay, so it returns. <laughs> Okay, it returns it in Python. I want in, Java, in TypeScript. Give me, give me some TypeScript, baby. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now he, he writes it. So like you can see, it works perfectly and it makes you save a lot of time. But asking too much to ChatGPT can create unexpected issues. For instance, I released a video recently where I created a piece of logic that updates the title and the thumbnail of the video with the right view count. I went the lazy way and asked to code most of the logic by itself. It gave me a solution that looked really good and that was actually really promising, but its solution couldn't really work in the tech stack I was using. Because I blindly followed what it told me to, I went into the rabbit hole and ended up spending more time fixing its code than just trying to code it by myself. And ultimately, I lost a lot of time and I felt a bit stupid by the way because the solution was into the Google documentation and I didn't follow the documentation because I just followed what ChatGPT told me and I lost a lot of time. So don't be stupid like me, don't be lazy and just try to think about is ChatGPT giving me the right solution to this problem and it should be all right. But where ChatGPT shines the most is to do very simple and boring tasks for you. For instance, last time I had to format all those CSS variables into a JavaScript object. Fuck my life. 
Instead, just ask ChatGPT. Could you transform us CSS variables into JavaScript object ordered by uh, keys, prefix, and then you add some code? Could you imagine going through them one by one? It would make me lose so much time. <laughs> so instead, we can ask our dear friend ChatGPT to do it for us. Or uh, another example this weekend, I needed to do the same logic than this Python code, but written in TypeScript. Uh, so again, prompt it, wait for it, boom. <laughs> this made me save so much time once again and so much mental energy. Also, if you're more of a junior developer or you're learning coding at the moment, using ChatGPT as your coding mentor, you've got access to your own private teacher 24-7. Instead of Googling for a simple question, you can ask and the model is actually really good at providing a solution as well as an explanation, which is actually really incredible. So honestly, so far ChatGPT has been incredible. I'm actually working on my own version of it with my own user interface and a custom behavior. My next video will be a showcase on how I coded it and how you can also use OpenAI API to create your own businesses. So see you on the next video. Bye.